The views on this program do not reflect those of ONTV or its board of directors. Welcome to OAA Now, your home for Oakland Activities Association news and information. Here's your host, Sammy Taramina. Welcome to OAA Now here. I'm Sammy Taramina, blogger around the OAA, the host of Last Week Brain Cells and host of Between Terminators on Oriented Television. I'd like to welcome those watching on the local voice on SoundCloud and those watching Oriented Television. Um, we got a lot to talk about. I mean, we're going to recap the um, districts um, for ba- for boys basketball. We're going to recap the regional at Lake Orion. Um, you know, obviously, when you look at this type of year, this time of year, it's really difficult on people, especially when you look at the end of the postseason, um, you know, and then you're starting up March Madness. You're kind of in a really, really serious area if you're if you're deep and this far in the postseason. Um Obviously, we like to send a congratulations to the um, to the city of Rochester for dominating a cheerleading competition, Division One, over at Central Michigan. Um, Rochester ended up winning that one, taking one, taking first place. Adams was second, and Stony Creek was third. Um, just total domination over there at um, Central Michigan University with Rochester, um, just really dominating things and just controlling things um, over there. Um, and then also congratulations to girls swimming, the Groves, um, um, boys swim and dive for winning the division two state championship. Um, Seaholm was third, um, in that, um, I really think, you know what I mean? Groves, um, for Groves, it's their first championship since 2010. Uh, they scored a two, 274 points. Seaholm was third. Um, Farmers was seventh. Stony Creek was ninth. Um, Adams was 15th, um, in division one at Calvin college, of course, Rochester finished ninth with 78 points. Oxford 11 was 62. Lake Orion was 18th with 55. Um, West Bloomfield was 22nd with 32 points and Blue Bay Hills was 33rd with four points and Troy was 34th with four points. So that's the recap of girl on um, swim and dive. Um, obviously when you look at, we're going to recap first the, um, girls, um, Regional before we talk the um boys. Um obviously when you look at recapping this regional, of course you knew you had three teams, um three OA teams that remained over Adam Lake Orion. You had Lake Orion taking on Howell, and then you had um West Boomby taking on Rochester. Um everybody thought West Boomby would just run over this regional. I mean, I'll tell you what, I thought I I left that regional thinking to myself, yeah, West Bloomfield won it, but West Bloomfield's got some serious flaws. I mean, this team has got some serious problems. Um, we're going to talk that in a couple minutes. Why um, I think they could have some issue with Flint Carmen Ainsworth um, in the um, state quarterfinal, but we'll see. I mean, but let's recap this regional. Of course, we had first game with West Bloomfield taking on Rochester, of course, and West Bloomfield and Rochester played twice. In the red this year, West Boom, of course, won in both games. Um, the second time at West Boom was pretty convincing. Um, and then they only scored 58 points against Rochester um, at Rochester. So, you know, you kind of expected that that game would be a little bit more closer than it was. And I I give Rochester a ton of credit. Yeah, the score says 61-41. But I, I, I really think that, you know, Rochester did some things that, kind of exposed West Bloomby a little bit. Um, you know, obviously both Davis sisters had big games. I mean, like I want to send my congratulations to India Davis on um, being the Gatorade national player of the year. Um, good honor for her. Um, but when you look at West Bloomby, everything starts and ends with Summer Davis. I mean, Summer Davis is the one who is putting up the numbers offensively. She's the one that, you know, wants to be, she's more the flashy player than India is. I mean, like, you really, I mean, yeah, they're twins. I get it. But I think it's more everything starts flowing around Summer Davis. And she had a big game against West Bloomfield. Um, but then they got into some foul trouble. And when you get into foul trouble, you know, things happen. And Rochester, of course, used their size to their advantage. Of course, we knew that they would, especially with Alice Max and Kylie Robinson. Um, I thought Alice Max played... Played well. I mean, like, she had 20 points. Um, 
You know, I really think that, um, you know, she's only sophomore. Her and Kylie Robinson are both sophomores. Um, I thought Natalie Race played well. Um, yeah, she had a really tough matchup, um, especially how good and quick and athletic West Bluefield's guards are. Um, but when I really look at, you know, obviously this that game, I mean, West Bluefield had a really tough time with them. I mean, they had a really tough time with Rochester. I mean, it didn't feel like West Bloomfield controlled that game. It really didn't, even though the score indicated it did. But it really didn't feel like it because you look at, of course, yeah, West Bloomfield has been killing everybody this year. I mean, their two losses have been to South Bend, Indiana, Washington, Washington Indiana, and Ypsilanti Arbor Prep. But when they, but when you get them in a tight game, I've noticed something with West Bloom that I haven't seen before, and that's fear. That is fear. You know, when you really look at that game, I mean, they panicked. They panic. I mean, obviously with West Bloomfield, um, and I think, you know, when you look at that game. And I think really looks like the video got went down a little bit. So we're going to be here on the radio side of things here on SoundCloud. Um, so work with me here on, we're on the SoundCloud at least, which is good. Um, but when you really look at this game, and I think you look at West Bluefield and they got some problems. They got some flaws. I mean, they're not a deep team. They've had some issues. And, you know, to, for them to only win by 20 points, I mean, I know I know the comments that Coach Joe McAllister made um, really, really basically like um, it sent like a, um, I, I kind of sent a message, you know, West Bloomfield really wanted to, you know, they didn't like, they wanted to beat people pretty badly. You know, and then they wouldn't accept moral victories. Um, I felt like that game against Rochester was kind of like a moral victory for Rochester. Because, yeah, even though they weren't going to win it, but they fought. I mean, bottom line is they fought in that game. They really fought in that game and proved that West Bloomfield really, you know, you know, they can be, they're human. I mean, they can be human. Um... So I really give Rochester a lot of credit, especially the seniors of that team. I mean, obviously you had Natalie Race, you had Abby Pleasant, Stevie Norgrove, um, you know, Ava Williams I mentioned, and then of course, you know, I mean, and then Natalie Race, obviously. Um with Rochester, it basically meant that um, you know, with them, it, it it's kind of really um, you know, they had a nice year. I mean, they won their first district title since 2000 and, um, John 16, I think. Um, I think that was the last time they won a district title. Um, but I know it was a long while that they won one. I mean, they knocked off Utica Eisenhower in the district final. Um, but Rochester had a really good year. I mean, they had a really nice year. And that's a credit to Bill Thurston and his staff. I mean, when you look at them next year, um, obviously you lose, um, you know, you lose all those seniors. I mean, if there's a player I'm really high on to watch for next year, it's Lucy Cook because she's a gamer. I mean, she's only a freshman. She played a lot on JV this year. Um, really made some noise this year. Um, she's one I am really, really high on for next year is, you know, to go along with the Twin Towers and um and um Alice Max and um and Kylie Robinson, I mean, clearly when you look at Rochester, I mean, I expect them to be back next year. I mean, obviously when you look at the district, they're going to have to go through Stony Creek again. Um, but I think deep down, I mean, like, here's a team that, you know, I think they could do some, da I, I could do some damage next year. I really do. I mean, they got a lot of experience coming back. So, yes, they're going to have to replace some key players, especially in the wings. But obviously you have the point guard of the future in Lucy Cook. And then of course you have um both the Twin Towers and Robinson and Mack. Um that is something to really, really watch for heading into the next year for uh, if you're Rochester. Um 
Okay, let's look at the other game now. Um, Lake Orion and Howell. Um, this ended up being a really good game. I mean, both teams were, you know, they were very similar to each other. Didn't have a lot of size. Um, you know, both teams had experience. Um, of course, um, Howell, of course, um, won their first district title since 2016. Finally got that Heartland jinx off them um, by knocking off Heartland. Of course, a lot of that was the play of their senior experience with um, Soapy Bogard and Molly Durlu. Um, I mean, like, Piper, their freshman, she's, she's, she's a player. I mean, her grandfather was the head coach when Howell's um, last deep team. Um, I think when you look at Howell, um, they're going to be good. I mean, they're scary. I mean, Coach O's done a really nice job over there, Howell. I mean, Tim Oroski, I think is his name. Um, Oshesky's his name. Um, he's done a really good job of that program. I mean, Howell has really built program strength over there. Um, I think especially getting rid of that Howell jinx was a really big deal. Um, I listened to the 93.5, um, W. I mean, like broadcast, um, with Dan Leach, um, really interesting how, how they do their games. I mean, I kind of wish, you know, at times that they would come East at times, you know, to announce more games, you know what I mean? I mean, it was really interesting to see how, you know, how well that radio performance was done. I also give credit to the WDBC broadcast for broadcasting the um, Lake Orion games, um, the games at Lake Orion High School for the regional. I mean, they do a really good job. I mean, really good job. Um, and I'm going to explain one call in a minute um, where I think that um, a lot of people say the game changed because of that. Um, I think that the, um, I really think that the difference in that game, you know, was Lake Orion made enough plays. And Howell didn't. I mean, that really was the difference. I mean, you know, you look at Maddie Ebert. Maddie Ebert had nine, had um, had um, nineteen points. I mean, I know they were saying Audrey Wishmeyer was Lake Orion's best player. Well, clearly, wasn't the case. Um, Audrey Wishmeyer, of course, she had that big game against Clarkson, where she went off for twenty-one points. Lake Orion hit thirteen threes in that game against the Wolves in the district final. They only hit five in the um, game against Howell. Um, especially early. I mean, they did just enough in that game. They did just enough. I thought Taylor Dinda played well. I thought Chloe Weegers had her moments. Um, but, you know, that game was even Steven throughout. I mean, Lake Orion had a six-point lead at one point, then Howell had a six-point lead at, at one point, and then, you know, everything like, you know, and then, of course, with Taylor Dinda's three-pointer at the buzzer, tied the game up with 24. Um, it really set the tone up for an incredible second half. I mean, Howell, you know, they took a, you know, third quarter, they took a one-point lead, and then everything started to flip for them from them. I mean, it started slipping. Um, I think the play that really changed it all was the uh, Maddie Everett three-pointer. Uh, three-point three point attempt where she got fouled by Molly Duru. And it was a legit call. It really was. I know I heard both the um, WDBC broadcast, and I also heard the um, 93.5 broadcast. Um, the 93.5 broadcast, Dan Leach was just really upset about it. Um, you know, it was a late whistle, but when you look at the WDBC broadcast, they explained it really perfectly, and it was the right call. It really was the right call. And, you know, and Ever ended up converting on three, on three free throws making it 43-40 um, in favor of Lake Orion. And then ended up being a back-and-forth affair. Of course, Dinda hitting a big two-pointer late to give Lake Orion a four-point lead at the time. Howell ended up countering back. Um, you know, they had the foul late. And then, you know, about 23.9 seconds to go in the game. Um, Howell called timeout. Um, obviously, the play design, of course, you know, they... And I read to watch the press conference. I heard about it, but I'm going to talk about that in a minute, but how old, you know, they had Molly Duru, Durulu and, um, and, um, Pipel, what really, you know, they, they were, um, not in sync and they couldn't get a shot off. And I credit Lake Orion's defense for that. 
I really do. Um, they didn't let Howell get a shot off. That really was the difference. And now you have, um, and I know that um, Dan Leach, you know, like, you know what I mean, didn't take anything away from Lake Orion and all that, but it was on Howell. I would say yes and no on that because the no part here is because I thought Lake Orion was better defensively in that final stretch where they shut Howell down. They caused Howell to turn the ball over several times, especially in that fourth quarter. Um, you know, and then, of course, um, with Howell, obviously the mistakes, that doomed them in. Um, I just think when you look at that game, um, it could have went either way. I mean, but Lake Orion, we know that student section can be very unique at times. They were in um, patri patriotic year. Um, I noticed Dan Leach made mention of the, um, Lake Orion student section. Um, but I really thought one of the differences in the game was the postseason experience because Lake Orion was there last year. Let's not forget this team lost to Clarkson in the regional semifinals. So they have some experience there. And, you know, you look at how, of course, you know, how finally getting by that Heartland jinx, of course, you know, Heartland this year was a little bit of a different team. I mean, I mean, they still, they're still Heartland regardless. I mean, like, Heartland's still a very good team. I mean, you look at players, they have, like, Olivia Linden on that team. Um, They got others as well. I mean, they had a first-year coach over there. Um, But it was a tight game until late in the third quarter, that Howell game, where Howell started pulling away. They haven't getting a three-point buzzer beater, and the Maui Duru took over that game. I mean, that was a difference. Um, but Howell finally got over that jinx. So, at the game, um, I know people in Livingston Daily wondered what the heck happened in that final play. And, you know, and, you know, they, um, they had every, they, um, usually, they had Sophie Burgard, I mean, Sophie Dogard, um, you know, in there for the final stretch, but she wasn't in there because she fouled out. And, you know, people how they can complain all they want, but that charge on Dur on um Dogard, that was clearly a charge on Manny Ember. That was clearly a charge. And there were a couple of plays that I thought was um but people at Howell, you know what I mean, they're gonna be looking up at themselves and, you know, kicking themselves in the can. Because bottom line is you really look at this game and Obviously, you got to give credit where credit's due. Um, I thought Lake Orion's defense was good. I mean, like, yes, they were out-rebounded pretty badly. Um, and it wasn't close on the boards. I mean, Howell really dominated the glass on both sides. Lake Orion just did just enough in that game. You know, usually... With Howell, you know, usually with teams, if you win the rebounding battle, you're going to win the game. And, you know, that wasn't the case here with Howell and Lake Orion. I mean, Lake Orion just made enough shots to win that game. I mean, you know, I thought Maddie Ebert played really well. Um, They did a really good job shutting down Audrey Wishmeyer. I was really surprised about that, you know, you know, considering how that was their game plan was not to let Lake Orion shoot the three ball. Um, I thought Howell did a really good job of that. Um, then Lake Orion on the other side of, of things, they really shut down Dogard. I mean, they got her into foul trouble. Um, Piper was the, was the one I was really shocked about because she's got a smooth shot. I mean, she's got a really smooth shot. She can go in, um, you know, I mean, I know her grandfather used to coach at Howell. Um, and, um, you know, that, that pipeline, is still there. That connection to the um to their deep postseason run is still there for Howell. And, you know, but credit where credit's due. I mean, you gotta get credit to Lake Orion. I mean, obviously what Coach Bob Bridges has done, um, he's really done a great job with the program where it's at. Um I mean like, but um when you look at the um, when you look at the um, with the dragons, of course, it was a good win for them at the time. Great win for them, big big win for the program, big.
big win. And then you had the regional final, um, Lake Orion versus West Bloomfield. Of course, West Bloomfield won both times against Lake Orion. But I'll tell you what, that first quarter really exposed West Bloomfield. I'm not being mean to you. Because when you look at West Bloomfield, their bench is a is gonna is a problem. I mean, their bench is a problem. Um, Lake Orion put 19 points on them. I don't know if anybody's put 19 on them maybe since Arbor Prep or South Bend, Washington, Indiana. I mean, like, I don't think I've seen anybody do that to West Bloomfield. And they were rattled. They were really rattled. I mean, Destiny Washington got hurt. Um, you know, and you know, and that, you know, and I didn't know how important she was in that game. I didn't know how important she was until then. Because you could tell they were getting flustered, frustrated. Um, you know, Lake Orion was hitting shots. Unfortunately, the Dragons, the shots didn't fall. I didn't think it was anything special West Bloomfield did um, throughout the rest of the game. I mean, yeah, Summer Davis had 21 points. But Lake Orion did something to them. They really did. I mean, West Bloomfield ended up winning that game 48-30. to 30. Um, securing their second straight regional title. But I think if you're Lake Orion, I think to me this was more of a moral victory for you because, you know, West Bloomfield only scored 48 points. That's the lowest they've scored this year. And you look at a team like that who's averaging about 50, 50 points, 55 points a game, you know, that tells you something. really does. Um... You got to credit Lake Orion's nine seniors. Maddie Ebert, Taylor Dinner, Chloe Wiegers, Grace Sullivan, um, Audrey Wishmeyer, um, Jody McCaffrey, um, Kylie Heck, um, Fontana Blackney, and Allison May. Um, just, an, just an incredible run for these girls. Two district championships, getting the regional final, Winning 20 games, which is probably the most since 09. And I remember that 09 team really well when Lake Orion, of course, had um, Bethany Waterworth leading the state semifinals. Um, unfortunately, falling with Benton Harbor team was really good that year. Um, but this Lake Orion team this year really was enjoyable to watch. Even with the injuries, you know what I mean, to um, Izzy Walitsky. Um, Charlotte, Charlotte Pebloski, of course, Jody McCaffrey did get hurt. And then, of course, Maddie Everett was concussed, um, was out for a couple games until the end of the um, regular season where, you know, and then she came back in the postseason with a vengeance. Um, I think Coach Bob Bridges did a really nice job with this team. His challenge next year is going to be is it'll be a different team next year, but there's still some pieces. You know, you look at players like Ryan Palachak, um, Izzy Walensky, Charlotte Peploski, um, Alana McGinnis, I think are expecting to take on bigger roles. I mean, you got Mel Guccione, Mackenzie Tabish, um, maybe Kylie Kapinski. Um, they could all take on much bigger roles next year for Lake Orion. I mean, I think this team's going to be fine talent-wise. Um, your freshman class is actually pretty good coming in. Um, not like the senior class who was really good, but they still have some proven talent. I mean, you know, and I forgot to mention Taylor Dinda's name on there, too. I think I apologize for that. Um, but this Lake Orient team this year, you know, that senior class, great memories with this team. Great memories. I mean, two district titles, that says a lot. They won the blue title when they were sophomores. Um, juniors, the district title, obviously, um, just a lot to be proud of your coach, Bob Bridges. Um, but I expect this team to be back. I think they're going to be solid next year. They're a different team though. Obviously, Izzy Walensky coming back, but bottom line is, you know, I think Lake Orion, you know, when you look at what they did, people are going to say is, you know, is it West Bloomfield? I don't think so. I think I thought Lake Orion played a really had a really nice game plan for West Bluefield. 
Um, really had to make West Boobie work. And, you know, unfortunately it came down to was they used to make shots. That was the difference. You know, they make shots. You know, the second quarter, West Booby won that one 13 nothing, And that was the difference. Really was. So now let's talk West Bluebeam. And I think people are going to say, well, okay, you know, West Bloomfield, you know what I mean? They're getting rolled in the state championship game. I don't think so. I think this team's got some serious concerns. I've been saying this on the pod for about a month now. That West Bloomfield is a team that's got a lot of concerns. You know, and it, and it showed in that regional. It really did. I mean, West Bloomfield relies a lot on the Davis sisters. They rely a lot on the Hendricks sisters. And then you just saw with Destiny Washington. She got hurt. She came back in the game. Wasn't the same player. But you could tell how important her presence was. I mean, with Summer Davis, she's a good player. I mean, she's a good player. Don't get me wrong. I still think she's only a junior. But I still think there's some ga- parts of her game she needs to work on. Indy Davis is a really good glue girl. Really good one. I mean, but when I look at this West Bloomfield team, everything starts and ends with Summer Davis. Really does. And that's not a knack to Daryl McAllister and his team, but I'm serious. This team's got some trouble. They've got concerns. I don't know if it was, oh, that they were they were taking it easy, you know, considering, you know, you were beating people by over 50 points a game, you know. You know, what What fun does that have? Does that have if you look at a team like a West Bloomfield who's beating everybody, even good teams, over 40 points? Is that going to get you any better? You tell me that question. You tell me that question. Is beating a team by 40 points, I don't care how good you are, going to get you any better? That's the question I have with West Bloomfield. And now you're taking on Flick, Carmen, and Ainsworth. It's coming out unbeaten. I think, you know, if, if, if the matchups between Flick, Carmen, and Ainsworth and West, and, um, you know, if they would have played Lake Orion at Detroit, at um, West Bloomfield, I think, I think West Bloomfield, I think Carmen and Ainsworth got one loss on that loss call. That's how honest I am. But with West Bloomfield, you know, you look at, okay, that team, they, they, they looked disinterested at times. In the Rochester game, they looked completely disinterested. I mean, bottom line is, you know, yeah, West Bloom is a very good team and all that, but you got to get up for these games. You got to get up for these games because if you don't like the game of basketball, then you shouldn't be here. You got to get up for these guys. You got to get up for this game. You got to get up for the love of the game. And I don't know if they do. I mean, the mindset of the players, I will be very curious to see how they do in the quarterfinals against Plymouth Carmen Neighbors. If they get by that, they should have no issue with either Plymouth Salem or Riverview. I think they'll beat both of them. Um, I think the game against Rockford is going to probably be the one to really watch if they get there, if Rockford gets there. I mean, I really think, or Detroit Renaissance. I mean, like, if it's Detroit Renaissance, um... That could be a really interesting game. But if you're Coach Gerald McAllister, the mindset of this team's got to change a little bit. And, you know, you got to get them ready to go motivated for the game. Not be this disinterested type team that I saw at the regional, especially against Rochester. I mean, they've got some problems. I mean, they don't really have a player behind Destiny Washington. It kind of showed in that Lake Orion game. I mean, they clamp down defensively when they want to. I mean, Summer Davis, you know, what happens if both Davis sisters have a terrible game? What happens if they both have a terrible game? If Summer, let's say, hypothetically, Summer goes, only scores at least 10. It happens to good players. It really does. Um, Or if India gets shut down, if both Davis sisters get shut down, yeah, you got both Hendrick sisters. I mean, Kendall and Sid. But bottom line is, you know, when you look at West Bloomfield, you know, what if all four of those players get shut down? Then that's a big problem for West Bloomfield. 
a serious problem for West Bloomfield. Because, you know, you look at it, yeah, you, I mean, like, yeah, I get it, you're trying to build depth, but then you look at these blowout games that you're having, I mean, like, you know, is that going to get you any better? Or are you going to be a stale team? That's the question I have. And that's a big question for them hanging in next year. How are we going to get themselves better? That's the big question I have for West Bloomfield. Too many questions for the Lakers. Too many questions. I mean, during the state quarterfinal, I mean, people are already praising them. But the concerns are still there for this team. Really are. So, that's my take on West Bloomfield. That's my take on the region for girls basketball. Um, Rochester and Lake Orion both had really good years this year. Really good years this year. I expect Bolton to be back next year. Um, so we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens there. Um, and then let's go to boys. Um, we're going to recap the district finals, the district recaps. Um, when you look at the districts, I think that, you know, when you look at district number 59 over at, um, at, um, Hazel Park, um, Ferndale had some issue with Detroit Old Redford Academy in the, in the district final. Um, and bottom line here, Ferndale found a way won that game. And now they're in a really tough regional coming up. Back at Hazel Park, that's going to help them, though. Familiarity. They take on a very good Detroit University prep team. Coached by Brendan Barrett, um, former coach at Hazel Park. Um, you know, they played earlier in the year, first game of the year. Um, West Bluefield, I'm sorry, Ferndale ended up losing that one 55-53 over at Wayne State. Um, so that'll be really interesting to see how Ferndale responds, but in that one, of course, that winner could also see Warren Michigan Collegiate in the, um, in the regional final. I mean, that would be really interesting if it's, if it's Ferndale against Warren Michigan Collegiate. I, I just think Ferndale could, Ferndale right now, I've got some concerns with them, but they did just enough against a really good team in old, in, in Detroit Old Redford Academy. Now, Warren Michigan Collegiate has been battle-tested. I mean, they went by, they beat um, Warren Lincoln. Of course, Warren Lincoln, let's not forget, gave North Farmington their only loss of the year. I mean, bottom line is, you know, when you look at Ferndale, I mean, like, Ferndale, you know, they have the talent to get there. I mean, they have the talent to win, to get back to the Breslin. But they've got to prove it in this regional. And this regional's tougher than it was last year. So, I think Warren Michigan Collegiate can get by Hopperwood Chandler Park Academy. Um, so, bottom line is, you know, for Ferndale, got to win this region if you want to get to the back of the quarters. And the quarters, will be, if they get there, will be at a very familiar site in Lake Orion. Um, of course, Ferndale used to be at, used to go to Lake Orion for, um, you know, when Lake Orion was in the red. So, that would be very interesting if it's... Um, you know, Ferndale were to win that regional and come back to Lake Orion. Um, that would be really interesting. Um, let's go to district number um, 30. This was, this was where Harper Woods was at. Um, Harper Woods ended up falling in the um, district final of the Gross Point South, 68-45. Um, Gross Point South really good. I mean, there's no doubt about it. I mean, Harper Woods had that big one against Gross Point North in the district semifinals. But... Running in the Gross Point South, obviously, you know, the Blue Devils um, had a good year this year. I mean, they're having, a, they're having a, one of those, they're having a great year this year. I mean, pretty much with them, I mean, like, you know, Harper Woods, it's just, you didn't expect it, you know, with them to get there. But they got there. Um, the good news for for Harper Woods is they'll probably be back in Division Two next year. Um, the enrollment list did come out. Um, so Harper Woods probably will be back in Division Two. Um, so it'll be very interesting to see how the Pioneers do next year, considering you know having that Division One experience. Um, they're going to be very good again next year. Um, a lot of the talent coming back for Coach Um Tawan Porter. Um, so it was a good year for Harper Woods, winning the gold title this year says a lot. Um, we'll be very curious to see how Harper Woods. Makes the next step next year. Really curious to see how that goes. Um, let's go to district number 28. This was at Sterling Heights-Stevenson. Um, the Troy Colts winning their district. 
knocking off Sterling Heights Stevenson. Of course, Sterling Heights Stevenson had to survive Troy. Um, Athens, 61-60, um, which was a real tight game there in the district semifinals. Troy had to get by Utica. Uh, and then they had a really hard time with the Titans. I give the Titans a lot of credit. Um, I thought, you know, in that game, you know, Troy had their issues. I mean, Troy's lack of depth really came into play here against Stevenson. But they found a way, won it with balanced scoring. Um, John Whiteside, Mason Parker, um, Carter Cosmano, Zach Pinoza, Darius Whiteside coming back from an ankle injury. Um, you know, give credit Coach Gary Fralick um, for winning the district title. Um, I think, you know, when you look at Troy, obviously, you know, you know, and I forgot about Chase Kuiper as well. I mean, like, but give Troy a lot of credit here. Now they move on to the regional, and it's a tough regional. We're going to talk that regional in a couple minutes um, over Adam Troy, which is vicious, to say the least. They're really, really vicious, to say the least. Um, District 27, this was at Bloomfield Hills. Um, you know, biggest, people are going to talk about, obviously, the Birmingham Brother Rice upset against Torture Lake St. Mary's. Um I think when you look at, you know, Bloomfield Hills, you know, Noah Adams just had a great career with Bloomfield Hills. Um, West Bloomfield won that one 66 in the opening round. Um, I really think that, um, you know, Noah Adams just had a really great career. I mean, scored over 1,000 points in his career. Um, he's had some big games. I just think West Bloomfield did just enough to win him that game. I mean, that really was the difference there. Um, West Bloomin, unfortunately, ran at Orchard Lake St. Mary's. Um, it was a tight game, competitive game, but at the end of the day, the Eaglets moved on past the Lakers. I'll tell you what, West Bloomin is going to be scary next year. I mean, yeah, they lose Mitchell City to graduation, but everybody else is everybody else is back. I mean, Donnie Watts, um, you look at, of course, Tory James, Chris Britton, um, I think Michael Pittman's back. Um, bottom line is I think West Bloomfield, they could be primed to have a special run next year. I think if they're in the red, I think they're going to be a player for sure. Um, but it is what it is. So West Bloomfield, um, you know, fell to Orchard Lake St. Mary's had a nice year. Really good year for Coach Arnett Jordan and his team. Um, other side of the bracket, you had Groves taking on, um, Seaholm. This was up to the, this was up to the first round. People are going to say, okay, um, you know, because Seaholm was in the blue this year. Groves in the white. Groves was getting a lot of confidence. But bottom line is Seaholm has proven experience. They were they were flat out better defensively than Groves. I mean, let's not forget, Groves' best players are only sophomores. I mean, John Simpson and Josh Gibson. I mean, you know, bottom line is, you know, in that game was Seaholm just wanted it more. I mean, Ben Diskin had a big night. Um, Ryan Sparby, he had a big night as well. Um, but for Seaholm, it was played at their pace. Um, they didn't, it, 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 I mean, Coach um, Greg DeGeter, he said it best, was they had to play a Wisconsin-type style basketball, which they did. <laughs> and they did. So that's a big credit to where credit's due to the players at Seaholm, especially the proven experience. That they have. Um, for Groves, keep your heads up. I mean, had a good year. Really good year under first year coach Mark West. Just, you know, it's unfortunate things happen in the postseason. That's just the beauty of March. It really is. Then Seal ran to Brother Rice, and um, it was a 52 34 game. It was an 18 point game. So they fought, competed in that game. So credit where credit's due with Seahol. I mean, they had an incredible postseason district. District run, especially upsetting Groves, they're gonna remember that for the rest of their lives. I mean, that's the case here. They're gonna remember that for the rest of their lives. Um, District Twenty Six at North Farmington. Um, North Farmington really no issue with their district. Um, of course, Sophie Darson Tech knocked off Livoni Stevenson six six sixty three. Um, and then North Farmington just blew out A and T. Farmington fell to Detroit Henry Ford. Um, and then. North Farmington really no match for Detroit. I mean, really had um laid out a um total domination of Detroit Henry Ford in the district final. Um, we kind of expected that with North Farmington. Um, moving on to the regional there. Um, there's a reason why they're one of the top teams in the state right now. 
just with the way they're playing. Um, so when you look at that, they're heading in the region with competence. Um, District 25, this was at Berkeley. Um, of course, you Detroit University, Detroit Jesuit moving on here. Um, of course, Berkeley knocked off Detroit Mumford. Um, <laughs> but with no match for um, Detroit Henry for um, Detroit University, Detroit Jesuit. Um, obviously, you know, with Berkeley obviously having a good year. Um, Timmy Rukovich, he lose six seniors, including Rukovich. Um, had a nice year. I mean, Coach Joe Servo had a nice year. Was in the blue race most of the year. Kept in it with them. Um, bottom line is, um, I just think Seaholm really, um, you know, I really think Berkeley really was the, um, you know, they, they had a nice year. I mean, I'm curious to see what happens next year with Berkeley. I mean, program strength, the big, I mean, it should be solid program strength wise, but we'll see. We'll really see. Um, Royal Oak took on, um, you know, Royal Oak fell to Detroit Renaissance. It was a heck of a game between those two teams. Um, but Royal Oak just didn't have enough. They lose six seniors, including, um, you know, D including um, Dylan Hoffman. They lose him. Um, Davis Arbiter is another one. Rashad Wilson. Um, curious to see how the Ravens do next year. They do have um, Cam the Clark and, um, and um, Nick Hoffman coming back. Um, Three-point shooting will be a very interesting watch. I'm curious to see how this team does this offseason. Really curious to see how they do. Um, Oak Park, and then of course Oak Park, they knocked off. They knocked off. I mean, like Oak Park, obviously, um, knocked off Detroit Renaissance. Um, and then um, the district final against UD Jesuit. This is where um, Oak Park's problem against UD Jesuit came to fruition. This team's lost three straight games. To the Cubs. I've been telling them since the season started. Play them. Play them. Play them. Play them because because you're not because like you're doing everything well in the red you're doing well but you haven't been able to get by UD Jesuit now yes next year the Cubs are a different team yes they don't have Sonny yes they won't have Sonny Wilson that sophomore class they have though is still pretty good so if you're Oak Park until you knock off UD Jesuit you're not going anywhere that's really what it is you have to knock off UD Jesuit if you're gonna want to make some noise. And I know Coach Rand Shepard knows that. But that's the bottom line. Is if you can knock off UD Jesuit, you know, you're going to have a deep run. But until then, you're not going anywhere. That's really what it is. And that's not knocking the knack of Oak Park. That's I'm telling you what the bottom line is. That really is. You know, because that's how it's been the last three years. Last three years, you haven't been able to get by the Cubs. Whether it's been in the district semifinal, where you lost in double overtime, or in the district final twice, you lost both those games. So, that's my take if you're Oak Park next year. You have to beat UAD Jesuit. Because if you don't, you know what I mean? You're not going. Anywhere. That's where the bottom line is. And you got a pretty good team class coming in next year. You got a good team coming back. So, that's my take on Oak Park. You know, so... You know, so that's the bottom line for them. Um, district 4 at Grand Blank. Um, when you look at this district for Oxford, it was going to be really tough either way. Um, they knocked off Lapeer. Good win for them. Jake Champagne at 26. Um, but really, in all reality, it was just they had a really tough time at Grand Blank. Um, R.J. Taylor played well for them in that game. Um, you know, Taj Boyd had a nice game for them. Um, this Oxford's lack of size was pretty evident in that game. Yes, they fought in that one, but really, in all reality, um, it was going to be a tall task for Oxford to win that game against a really good Grand Blank team. Um, I mean, Oxford's got a lot, majority of their team coming back. Yeah, both Katie's coming back. You lose Dylan Stone, that's going to be a tough one. Conde Mantria, that's another tough loss. You have Cassisi, you have Jake Champagne coming back. Um... You know, Oxford's going to be fine. I, I just think they're going to be fine. Program strength looks solid for Coach Steve Laidlaw. Um, I just think bottom line is, you know, if I'm, the, if I'm Oxford, I'm petitioning the MHA to change my district. I talked to Dan Brown, the owner of Chicago Brothers Pizza, about this the other day. And he and me agree with me. If you switch Clarkson, Lake Orion, and um, Oxford, 
you put Clarkson up north with Grand Blank, uh, geographically it makes sense because Grand Blank is a lot closer to Clarkston than here at Oxford. And then you look at, of course, where would you put Oxford? Put Oxford East. Put him with Utica. Romeo. I mean, Oxford's closer to Romeo. Much closer to Romeo than they are to um, than they are to um, Grand Blank. I mean, and then you put Lake Orion at the other, you know, in the in a district of Avondale, Waterford, Mott, Pontiac, Kettering, and you know, I think that's the perfect suggestion. So that's my take on that. Um, but for Oxford, just really unfortunate they had their season end in the district semifinals. Um, and then you have. District number six, this was at Clarkston. Um, Clarkston, really no issues with their district. Um, you know, of course, they knocked off, um, I mean, like, Avondale, of course, um, had a very tough loss to Water for Mott. I thought they were competitive with them in the district semifinals. Um, Clarkson really had no issue with Water for Kettering. And then getting to the district final, they beat Water for Mott 60-52. The only issue I had with Clarkston was, why are you the visiting team on your why are you the visiting team on your home floor? Makes no sense. Really doesn't. Um I was asking that several times on Twitter. Why was Clarkson the visiting team? Because when you're when you're on your home floor, you should be the home team. Doesn't matter what uniform you wear. I mean, you look at Lake Orion, they wore black in girls basketball, and yet they were the home team. <laughs> and then you look at of course, I will bet you at least Almost every single school, there's some that would put their home school as a visiting team. But I will bet you most of them, because of parent, because of because of confusion, would put their home school as a home team. You know, they don't necessarily have to follow the bracket. Don't necessarily have to. Um, but in the games, I'll tell you what. I mean, I read Water for Mott's coach, um, Sean Moore's comments about the officiating, about, you know, that they were thinking it was physical and all that. Here's the thing. I'm going to tell it to you straight up. Clarkson's physical. They're a physical team. You look at players like Desmond Steffens. You look at Brody Cozen. You look at, you know, I mean, bottom line, you know, Kevin O'Dayton. Here's the similar thing here. I'm going to play football. Okay? They know what it takes to win. They know what it takes. I mean, yes, you have Braden Wiley on that team as well. Um, but I'm going to tell you what right now, I don't want to hear it, you know, of the, that to me was an excuse, you know, about how the game was officiated, you know, how it was like, you know, turn it into a football game. You know what? That's Clarkson style. You have a good football team yourself over there at Waterford Mott, you know, football and basketball, they can be played different games. Basketball is not supposed to be this type of, you know, like a flashy, classy, you know, flashy moments. They're not supposed to be. Basketball, you know, there's teams that like to play ugly basketball. Clarkson's one of those teams. They play ugly basketball. They've been playing ugly basketball the whole year long. They found ways to win games. They can be physical. I mean, you look at a district that was really physical, the one at Utica Eisenhower was really physical. <laughs> so, with physicality in basketball, I don't want to hear it from Sean Moore. I don't want to hear it. Because I'll tell you what, Carson can play any type of style. And bottom line is, you've lost two straight years to Clarkson. So, bottom line is, and that's my take on it, it is hard for me to trust Waterford Mott, you know, when it comes to taking on Clarkston. Because everybody's been there before when they play Clarkston. I'll tell you that much right now. <sighs> so, that's my take on the Clarkston district. The Utica Eisenhower district, of course, that was crazy. I mean, you look at, of course, Lake Orion and, um, Adams in the district semifinal. Lake Orion not, did knock off Rochester, 64-54. Um, Romeo beat Stony Creek, 66-63. I thought Stony Creek deserved better in that game. I really did. Um, bottom line is, I think that the um, I think that the Bulldogs, you know what I mean, 
they relaxed way too soon and allowed Stony Creek back in the game. I got to give credit to the seniors at Stony Creek, though. They had a really tough year adjusting to Coach Jeff Owen, um, but they fought in that game against Romeo. They fought in that game, and they had a chance to win it, just couldn't get it done. Um, Lake Orion, of course, knocking off Rochester, 64-54. Give credit to um, Rochester seniors, Grant Calgano, Eli Collage. Um, great year for both those two guys, along with Kamani Potts. Um, just a great, great season for all three of those guys for playing for Coach Nick Ebola. Um, Max Mole is going to be a, a star in the making over there. He's only a freshman right now. Um, and then you had the semifinals. You had Lake Orion and Adams. Basically, was a football game. Um, Adams ended up winning that one 50-42. Um, they did just enough in that game. I thought Lake Orion was a better team in the fourth quarter. Um, really made things uncomfortable for Adams. Um, Brady Priest scored at 27 points. Um, the Adams' size was the difference in that game. 36 to 50 points from their bigs. Um, Blake Warren, they do lose a lot. They lose Nate Havrilla. They lose DJ Morrow. They lose, um, Blake Liddell, um, Kevin Tobe, and, um, Mateo DiCio, um, to graduation. They lose those five guys. Curious to see how Coach Jose Andradas does next year. You got a player like Kane to Graffin Reed. You got, you got um, Ethan Sharkey, um, Gabe Scott. I think's in in line to have a big year. Um, you know, I'm curious to see how Ryan Russell does. You know what I mean? I think Lake Orion. They got some talent. You know, next year, I think they're gonna be fine. Are they gonna be better than you know? But I'm curious to see how the Dragons do next year. Really curious. But good year for the Dragons, despite the 500 record. They've lost seven games by five points or less. Um. Kind of are better with their seeding. Uh, Utica Eisenhower and Adams. Uh, no, Utica Eisenhower and Romeo. That was a Eisenhower win. Finally getting the um, Romeo um, monkey off their back. Um, and then the district final. Obviously, the district final recap. Um, Adams winning that one 45-44 in a buzzer beater by um, William D. Um, I got to give Noah Kim a lot of credit here. He was the one who grabbed the offensive rebound. Setting up the three ball for to G um to win it for Adams. Um second straight district title for Coach Jared Thomas. Um just incredible run for you know for Adams going to the next round, um, heading to Fatten for the regional. Um let's speaking of the regional, of course, let's talk the regional rounds. Obviously, um the regional starts tonight. I talked a little bit with Ferndale when it comes to their district two one over at um Hazel Park. Um Interesting district, interesting regional over there. Um, the district one regionals are interesting. Um, of course, we have district number two at Fenton. Um, you got Adams taking on Milford, and then you have um Clarkson taking on Fenton. That's a rematch. Um, the district over at Troy is going to be interesting. You got UD Jesuit taking on um Orchard Lake St. Mary's. Of course, St. Mary's we talked about upsetting Birmingham Brother Rice in the district final, and then you have Troy taking on North Farmington. Um, when you look at the matchups, I mean, like, obviously, you know, first let's talk Ferndale a little bit here. I've talked earlier about the rematch with um, Detroit University Prep. I think Ferndale gets him this time because of the experience. I think Ferndale's been playing a much more tough of schedule than University Prep. Um, and then I expect a rematch, a uh, big game in the region final between Ferndale and um, Warren Michigan Collegiate. I think it's going to be tight. Um, I think the Eagles have just enough to move on. I see Ferndale in the state quarterfinal um, going on next week here. So, interesting to see how that will go. Um, Region 2 at Fenton. Um, Clarkson, Fenton. That's a tough, that's a trap game for Clarkson. Fenton's a physical team. They're a solid team. Won their district against um, Heartland um, in the district final. Um, still in Shaka, Heartland beat Holly. Um with a buzzer beater in that one. I was really shocked how that game went. Um, jump ball really decided that game. Led to a three by Hartland. Um, of course, Fenton had to get by Howell. Howell was better than people thought. And then, and then, um, so it'll be very interesting for Clarkson going against Fenton. It's a rematch of a 53-49 win for Clarkson back on January the 6th, I believe was the date that game was. Um, but, you know, it was a good win for Clarkston. Um, so I'm curious to see how they handle that on the road. It's going to be a virtual road game for Clarkston. 
um, going out to Fenton, taking on the Tigers um, at Fenton's home gym. They've been there before, so you know, so very curious to see how that one goes. And then Adams taking on Milford, um, the Highlanders. You know, the Mavericks have been really been impressive. I mean, they knocked off Lakeland. That was a tight game, and then they knocked off Wall Lake Central, which was a really tight game there. Um, but I'm seeing a district final between. I think, I think Clarkson does get by Fenton close. And I see Adams getting by Milford. So I'm seeing a rematch between from a district semifinal game between Adams and Clarkson. Adams has had Clarkson's number twice this year. Um, I just think Adams has just enough. And I think the Highlanders, you know, are going to move on to the um, quarterfinals. I see them playing Grand Blank in Lake Orion. Um, it'll be very interesting to see how that one goes. Grand Blank better be careful Carmen Ainsworth, though. I think Carmen Ainsworth could give them problems. So we'll see in the district semifinals. We'll see how that one goes. Um, and then the district and the regional over at Troy. Um, obviously, when you look at this matchup here, um, you got Orchard Lake, St. Mary's taking on Birmingham, UOD Jesuit. I think the Cubs get, get, I think the Eaglets beat the Cubs here in this one. I think the play of Trey McKinney, um, Sharon Barnes, they were the difference makers in their game against Birmingham Brother Rice. Um, I think they're going to get to the, um, regional final. And then on the other side, you have Clarkson taking on, on the side, you have, um, Troy taking on North Farmington. Um, it's at Troy. Troy's going to have the home crowd with them, behind them. Um, but I just think North Farmington is definitely too much in this game for Troy. Um, I just think the Raiders get, you know, they have just enough experience. Um, I just think they're going to get by. And that 2-2-1 trap, I think, is going to be a difference maker in that game. And then the other side, you have, um, you know, then setting up that regional final between um, North Farmington and... Um, Orchard Lake, St. Mary's. I really like North Farms in this game. I really think the star players are going to cancel each other out. I think Tyler Spratt's a difference maker in this game. Um, you know, his defense, I think he's going to guard. Um, he should guard Trey McKinney in that matchup tight. I mean, you got Landon Williams there. Now, I know Prep, the Prep Sports on YouTube is doing that game um, between Orchard Lake, St. Mary's, and UD Jesuit. I don't understand why, you know what I mean, they're doing that game. I mean, like, I, I know they've been falling more in love with the Catholic League as of late along with North Farmington, Ferndale, um, as well. But I gotta get, you got to get some love to Troy, man. I mean, like, come on now. You know what I mean? That's my take on the prep. I mean, like, you know, you got to give love. To, give some more love. You know what I mean? That's my take on that. So, final thoughts. We'll see what happens in the districts. I know the first day of spring sports start this week. So, very curious to see how things are going to go there. So, very curious to see how things will go. So, all right, I'm going to sign off here. Make sure you stop following the blog at Saginaw Bay 4650 at blogspot.com. Um, I apologize to the TV viewers. Um, what happened with the TV, with the outage went out. Um, TV side of things went out. So, we had the radio side of things here on the local voice on SoundCloud. Um, hope we will have the, um, hope we will have the um, video side of things um, figured out. If not, you can hear it here on the local voice on SoundCloud as well. Um, all right, everybody, I'm going to sign off here. Good luck on your brackets, everybody. Uh, make sure you fill out a bracket for the tournament coming up. And wish everybody the best of luck in the postseason tournaments, especially in the regional and to West Bloopy in the state quarterfinals um, coming up. Um, they do play Car quick Carmen Avers on Tuesday. If they get there, then they will play either Plymouth Salem or Riverview um, in the state semifinals. And then if they get there, most likely a clash with the Rockford or Detroit Renaissance in the district final. So, all right, everybody, we're signing off here. Take care. God bless. And I'll see you all next week, everybody. Take care, and I'll see you next week. God bless you.